talk about um, how to use OSC to control cues in QLab. And that's or any kind of cues, whether they're lighting cues, uh, sound cues, audio cues, or uh, video cues. And uh, QLab supplies um, this QLab's OSC dictionary. It's a document you can find online. And it offers all kinds of um, information on how to communicate both in and out of QLab with uh, using OSC messages. So if I go here, uh, I can take a look at something like uh, Q methods. And if I scroll down, um, I can see that if I want to, in fact, um, start a queue, uh, I can go for Q or slash Q, the Q number slash, and then just use the command start or stop down here, or um, re, uh, resume and pause is in here as well. So those are the four that I'll be showing you, but you can see there's a lot of other uh, uh, commands that you can give to a queue. I'll also do one where I'm controlling a slider, um, in other words, uh, a volume level. So if I go to audio queue methods and then I scroll down, uh, I can see that down uh, in here is um, slider levels and I can put in something like the queue that would followed by the queue number. The slider level is the command uh, and then that actual channel number zero being the, uh, the main output. Uh, and then the message decibel. So in this case, um, the channel number um, is uh, part of the command followed by the decibel that I want to control down. All right, so then if I go to QLab, we'll start kind of going from QLab working backwards. I've built a very simple queue. It's an audio queue with a file associated with it called hard rain. And if I hit go, here it is playing. And on this and there it is stop playing okay so now I'm going to take a look at my patch that I've created in Vuo that will send out um, signals to control it now you should know right off the bat that uh, Vuo is not great for operator interfaces and if you want to do something if you're really interested in creating uh, an operator interface uh, to control cues in QLab I would suggest either you're using QLab remote or um, even more fun is to use Touch OSC, which will allow you to set up um, a little graphic on your phone or on your iPad um, that will have sliders. And, and those interfaces are already built for you. Just add them in. You can um, create your own interface that can control volumes and makes cues go and, and uh, so on and so on. So, um, But I've set it up in QLab so we could understand here um, what exactly is happening. So I've, I've created a little window using the, um, the few operator interfaces that, um, that Vuo uh, offers to us. And so some buttons, and those buttons, when I press the button, uh, is sending a message. And that message here is Q1 start. And so if I go down to Q, QLab, and I go here, uh, and go start, there it is. Right. And if I take a look here, this is what it's actually sending out. So I'm just going to go stop and then start. And you can see it's down here and then stop and start. So those are the actual, and actually if it's a start and stop, a command for the queue, it actually ignores the message. And we'll talk about, more about that in a second. So I have created four buttons. Um, what it says here is just what it's what's named the button itself. What it's actually sending is uh, based on the uh, QLab OSC uh, dictionary. So uh, it's actually sending out Q, Q1, uh, start. And then here, I'll go in a little bigger here so you can see this a little better. And it's Q1, pause. And one thing you have to remember is that when you make an OSC message and you're communicating with QLab, you have to select floating point 32. If you do an integer or auto, it will not communicate. And you'll be wondering, what is wrong with my patch? Nothing is happening here. And that's just because you have to have it in float 32-bit uh, for it to communicate with QLab. That's the only, uh, the only format that QLab will accept. All right, so there we go. We've got, um, we've got four buttons that I've made. When the button is pressed, it's telling this make message to send out this message, Q1, start, and that's sending it out to send OSC messages on port 53. So I've, made, I've created a node here 
uh, 53,000 is the port which gets banged when it gets started. So it creates a port um, of 53,000 and sends it out. Now the other one that I've done is a volume control. And um, as, I, as I showed you um, in the QLab OSC um, languages or dictionary, um, here we have uh, a slider. Now this is a, a version of a slider that I've built myself, so I'm not going to get into it in a big way other than to say I've scaled it so that it's sending out a signal and that is the actual data. So the address here is going to be uh, make a message Q1 Sli uh, sorry, yeah, Q1 slider 0, which is the master, so it's actually slider level. And like all things with addressing and computers, it has to be exact. So small s, capital L, and that's right here in here, how to do that slider level um, here. Small s, capital level, and then the channel, and then the decibels that it's sending out at. And so if I take a look here, in the world of sound, minus 60, is infinite zero. In other words, um, it means that it, there's no sound going through and it can go from there up to zero, which is nominal, and then up to plus 12. And you'll see that in QLab as well. So if you take a look at QLab and we take a look at this Q and go to audio, you'll see that as I'm adjusting the level, it starts at minus 60 and then goes up to nominal or zero and then from there to plus 12. Okay. And so if I take, if I go to uh, back to my queue here and take a look here, here's the message coming out as I move the slider. So I'll go here first of all, I'll start the queue, uh, which is running just here because I've got it at zero. So you can see that the queue is running. So I'll stop it again and start and then run up the volume. And you can see the message over on this side is um, controlling uh, the amount of output on it. So I'll do that one more time. And then that. There's zero, and back to plus 12, and down to infinity, uh, negative infinity. So whatever I'm using to control it. And that could be, in our case, you could then attach that instead of having this uh, operator, sorry, this operator interface. Um, that you could in fact have uh, that attached to a hand or some other uh, interactive element that you're using to control. But as I said, if you're interested in creating something like this little interface that you could control cues from, you'd be better off working in TouchOSC um, to, to be able to, to control um, QLab remotely. In any case, um, both Max and uh, Vuo would allow you to control these elements. And in the interactive world, where we're using um, triggered events to make cues start and stop, and or um, uh, set volumes, lighting or lighting levels, or, or audio volumes, um, then it works very well. Vuo or Max would work very well in doing that because you could see it would be a very easy thing for me to hang to. Um, map my right hand y-axis to this scaling in here and then control the volume on it. Oh, I just wanted to show you here um, in QLab in OSC, you can see that it says uh, that it listens on, ah, there we go, QLab listens on uh, TCP and UDP port 53,000, so right there, uh, and then responds, it sends out its signals on 53,000 at 53,001. Okay, so I think that's everything. So remember, it's called the actual uh, QLab OSC dictionary. If you punch that in, you'll find that online. It'll tell you all the different, uh, uh, how to control camera cues, video cues, and so on. And then um, I would stay with the default, unless you need to otherwise, just send out, make sure you send out from your um, Max or Vuo or from um, TouchOSC if you're using it that you're sending out on port 53,000.